Come and listen to my story about a man named Jed. A poor mountaineer barely kept his family fed. And then one day he was shooting at some food. And up to the ground come a bubbling crude. Oil, that is. Black gold. Texas tea. Well, the first thing you know, old Jed's a millionaire. The kinfolk said, Jed, move away from there. Said, California is the place you ought to be. So they loaded up the truck and they moved to Beverly. Hills, that is, swimming pools, movie stars. The Beverly Hillbillies. Don't get out the front door. Hurry, Skip. Unlock the door. I see Skip. That a boy. <laughs> Come on, Skip. Turn the key. Thanks to you, Jethro. Yeah, you're welcome, Uncle Jeff. But I pretty near lost my leg doing it. She made it to the big tree, Jed. <laughs> Jethro, how about shinning up that tree and getting her down? I'd sooner jump into a swamp full of gators. This ain't no time for swimming. Now get out of that tree. I'm too young to die, Granny. Granny, the boy has been thrown out of that tree a couple of times on his head. <laughs> It ain't just that I got to fight Ellie up there in that treetop. She'll have her bobcat up there to help her. A raccoon and her possum and no telling what all. There goes a little ape to join her side. <laughs> Son of a gun can hang on with one hand and hit you with three. <laughs> oh, that's your big fraidy cat. I'll go get her myself. No, oh, Granny Jethro and me will handle it. You just stick around the bottom of the tree and see that no more critters joins up with her. Come on, Jethro. <laughs> Promise me, Uncle Jed. Yeah, boy, put down your end and run. <laughs> Where's Jethro? I'm gonna beat him up. You ain't gonna beat nothing but a great big batch of biscuit dough. Now, you get busy and make your paw a nice pan of hot biscuits. You want hot biscuits, Paul? Well, it ain't that, Ellie. It's just that we figure you ought to be able to bake biscuits for your husband. Well, I ain't got no husband. Well, we're hoping all that'll change. You see, here in Beverly Hills, a girl's got a chance to marry up with a handsome movie star. Yeah, like Tom Mix or Who Gibson. Well, Granny, I hear tell that they got some new ones. Uh, Miss Jane was talking about a fella named uh, Cary Grant. Grant? I don't think he's any relation. <laughs> now, uh, Ellie May, uh, supposing you was to marry up with Cary Grant, and uh, old Cary looked up from the supper table, and he says, uh, Ellie May, honey, I'm just a honing and a pining for some hot biscuits to sup up my red-eyed gravy. What would you say to that? No, 
I tell him to make his own biscuits the same way he made the gravy, because I can't make that neither. <laughs> Ken, haul her to the stove. I'm going to learn her to make hot biscuits and red-eyed gravy before Cary Grant comes a courting. Grab her to order, get through. <laughs> Last time I'm going to do this for you, Uncle Jim, a fella can take only so much punishment. <laughs> Looks to me like you might be fixing to make biscuits. I reckon so, Paul. Flabber milk biscuits, light as feathers. Did you put in the soda and the baking powder, Ellie? All there was. All there was? Why, that was a two-pound can of baking powder. <laughs> I don't want to worry nobody, but that clump of dough just took a deep breath. <laughs> He's feeling it, says it's baking powder. Look here, Paul, it's grabbing for you. What do we do, Granny? Well, we got two choices. We can either stay here and fight it or get out and give it the kitchen. Well, I'd say let's fight. What do you want to do, Jed? Well, I'm kind of in favor of getting out of here. Well, that gives me the deciding vote. Now, let's see. <laughs> I kind of think we're going to have to find another way to get Ellie ready for court. Not me! <laughs> well, before we do anything, we got to catch her. She's headed right for the Drysdales. Well, come on. Get through! <laughs> and then, right in the middle of the final hand, those dreadful hillbillies came charging across our patio, painted like savages, and threw the bridge tournament into complete chaos. Well, I'm sure there was no harm done. No harm done? I dropped my cards. Mrs. North Cross fainted. And Mrs. Wesson, our club champion, laid a low diamond from a heart bid and was wiped out. Now, Margaret, <laughs> I tell you what. A visit to the beauty shop always sort of picks you up. Why don't you go over there, spend a few hours, and get the works? I spent the entire morning in the beauty shop. <laughs> oh, oh, well, no wonder you look so lovely. Well, why don't you go shopping and buy yourself a new deck of cards? <laughs> Speaking of shopping, there's a new couturier in town I'd like to try. The House of Maurice. Everyone at the bridge luncheon was raving about the beautiful gowns he designs. Of course, he is terribly expensive. Don't give it a thought. You mean it? Of course. Stop thinking about it and go buy yourself a deck of cards. <laughs> Very well. I guess we won't be going out much with Mother here. Your mother's coming? She seems to be the only one I can talk to. Well, how about this new couturier? I'd love to talk to him. Okay, you win. <laughs> Milton, you're so sweet, so kind, so understanding. Put them all together, they spell chicken. <laughs> Why, Mr. Clampett, I would be honored to do a favor for you, any favor. It was you who gave me the opportunity to become a couturier. It was you who gave me this magnificent salon. Oh, vous êtes formidable. Vous êtes très généreux. Vous êtes un, un grand gentilhomme. Vous êtes... Uh... Now, Morris, uh, before you say too much, maybe you first better hear the favor I'm asking. Commandez-moi. Well, uh... Hmm? <laughs> Ask me anything. Oh, well, it's about my daughter, Ellie Mae. Ah, Ellie Mae. Très ravissante. Yeah. Hmm? <laughs> Your daughter is beautiful. Oh, yeah. Kind of high-spirited, though. Matter of fact, Granny has given up the idea of kitchen breaking her. We figure we're going to have to get her husband city style. City style? Yeah, well, good looks, uh, polite manners, and pretty clothes. Oh, and you want me to provide the clothes? And the manners, too, I reckon. <laughs> Bring her in. I will begin immediately. You sure uh, it ain't asking too much? My pleasure, Mr. Clampett. All right. Get through! Granny, bring her in! <laughs> well, you best stand back, Morris. She's a mite snappish when she's first unwrapped. <laughs> You 
sitting on a feather or something? <laughs> no, sir, Uncle Jim. I'm just thinking about what that dress shop is going to look like when Ellie Mae gets done bouncing that Frenchman off the wall. <laughs> She's going to turn that dude every way but loose. <laughs> now, Ellie Mae don't balk at wearing pretty dresses. She done herself right proud in that style show, didn't she, Granny? Yeah. But I still say we should have hobbled her to the store and learned her to cook. It ain't fitting for a girl to get married if she can't cook. Well, now, I was talking to Morris about that, and he says cooking ain't too important. Especially if Ellie was to marry up with a big movie star like uh, Cary Grant. <laughs> that don't make sense. You mean to tell me if Cary Grant comes home at night after working hard riding and roping and fighting them rustlers that he ain't gonna be hungry? <laughs> well, now, uh, Morris says that some of them big movie stars hire folks to do nothing but fix middles. Go on. Full-time hired hand just to cook for him? <laughs> Are those folks made of money? <laughs> well, a big star like uh, Cary Grant must make a tolerable living. Hey, Uncle Jed, you know something? I think I'm gonna be a movie star instead of a scientist or a brain surgeon. <laughs> I'd sure like to have somebody cooking for me full time. <laughs> what do you think I do? <laughs> well, Jethro, if your cousin Ellie May marries up with Cary Grant, maybe he'll learn you the movie star in trade. <laughs> Diggity talk. I sure hope Ellie gets him, man. <laughs> well, don't hold your breath. I still say if Ellie can't cook, no man would look at her twice. <laughs> Mais non, Ellie May. We were saying that you are beautiful. Ah, c'est belle pour n'importe quel homme. Madame Pauvin will teach you some French, along with other things. You will find it very useful. Oh, avec plaisir. Oh, I have an appointment now with an important new customer, the wife of a bank president. Come, Ellie. I want to see you in a dark wig. I'm sure the effect will be absolutely <laughs> stunning. Morris, this here is Jed Clampett. Well, Granny and me are just wondering whether Ellie's behaving herself. <laughs> Monsieur. Oh, Monsieur Clampett, your daughter is approaching me now, and here she is, standing by my side. I can only say, oh, c'est un ange. C'est une beauté. C'est... Elle est plus belle qu'un... Um... Uh, uh... Sounds like Ellie's choking the poor fella. <laughs> Ellie May, you let go of him. <laughs> Votre père, uh, your father. <laughs> Young ladies, do not whistle, they say. Enchanté. Now speak to your father. Père, father. Howdy, père. Enchanté. That there's French for howdy, pa, and... Ellie Mae, are you behaving yourself and doing what Morris and Miss Povan is learning you? Yes, sir, pa. I mean, père. That Mrs. Povan is learning me to talk French. Listen to this. All right, law port. That means open the door. Well, doggy. Ellie may just learn how to say open the door in French. Don't you open it, Morris. She'll run off on you. Done happen to me twice already today. <laughs> oh, Ellie may, Granny and me just want to say we's real proud of you. Now, you learn how to dress pretty and talk that French real nice. Well, now, the first time you run into Cary Grant, you say it to him right off. <laughs> Bye, honey. Say what to Cary Grant? Well, let me just learn how to talk some more French. Does it real nice, too. La plume de ma tante. <laughs> well, I hope it means hot biscuits and red-eyed gravy. <laughs> Don't wait for me, Jenkins. I'll be a long time, I hope. <laughs> Bonjour, madame. I'm Mrs. Milburn Drysdale. I have an appointment with Maurice. I am Maurice. Oh, this is a thrill. I hear your gowns can make any woman beautiful. Oh, in your case, madame, it is you who will make my gown beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> Champagne? I'd better not. The very atmosphere is intoxicating. What I do need, Maurice, is something perfectly exquisite to take my mind off those dreadful hillbillies. Hillbillies? 
I won't bore you with the story. I only wish my husband could operate his bank as you do your salon and exclude undesirable peasants like the Clampets. Uh, did you say the Clampets? Oh, don't worry. They'll never come here. They dress in the most outrageous clothing you've ever... Who is she? Uh, who, madame? That divine creature who just... There she is again. She's a customer. But she must be someone famous. Is she a movie star? <laughs> no, madame. Who then? Tell me. If I did, you would not believe me. Royalty. I should have known. She has that unmistakable regal bearing. Oh, please, Maurice, tell me who she is. I am sorry, Madame Drysdale, but we cannot reveal the identity of the young lady you have just seen. Uh, Pardon, Monsieur. Yes. Telephone. Uh, excuse me, Monsieur. Tell me, she is royalty, isn't she? That lovely young lady. Well, uh, I can truthfully say that I did hear Monsieur Maurice refer to her as a princess. I knew it. This is just too thrilling. <laughs> Chief, Chief, are you sure you're doing the wise thing? Are you kidding? My wife told the chauffeur to wait. She'd hoped she'd be a long time. In this kind of a shop, she can break me. <laughs> Madame would notice the striking beauty of this gown, matched by her own striking beauty. <laughs> the motif is classic, the material is velvet, and the design is, of course, original. Now, the price is, of course, outrageous. Milford, <laughs> how utterly vulgar. How much is it? Maurice, you see what association with the wrong people has done to him? Uh, Pardonnez-moi. Certainly, madame. Milban, you oaf. Just being here is a privilege. Do you realize who's back in the fitting room this very moment? A princess! Really, a princess? <laughs> Did you say something about a princess? Being fitted in the bath. Isn't it really? Who is she? Maurice refuses to divulge her identity. Probably traveling in Cognito. She didn't fool me. That kind of beauty and bearing has to be royalty. <laughs> Here she is. Isn't that thrilling? Isn't that Ellie? Gauss. Ellie Gauss. That's the word you're looking for, Chief. Right. Ellie Gauss. <laughs> Yonder's the Drysdale's and Miss Jane. No, no. <laughs> Glasses. Oh, here they are. Oh, Mrs. Mrs. Drysdale, the princess will think we're tourists. You oaf. Look, you frightened her away. <laughs> oh, dear, I'm sorry. But why can't I just go over and say hi to my friends? Well, they'll think I'm putting on airs. Ellie, Madame Drysdale is how you say, um, comment dit-on en anglais, uh, poseur? Snob. <laughs> oui, snob. Now, if you will listen exactly to what Madame and I tell you, we will teach her a great lesson. Okie dokie. Oh, no, dokie dokie. Certainement, c'est convenu, naturellement. Well, how about... <laughs> <laughs> so hard at becoming a lady, least we can do is bring her some company so she won't get lonesome. I reckon you're right, Jen. Come on, Jethro, hurry up with that company. <laughs> what I want to know is why we can't be Ellie's company instead of these critters. Jethro, if we was to go down there and stand around and watch Ellie studying lady and she'd get nervous as a cat. Speaking of that, where's your favorite bobcat? Up in the tree, and if she wants it, she can come get it herself. <laughs> yeah, I reckon that'll be enough company. <laughs> Skipper sure does look nice, don't he? Of course he does. He's got on my best tie. Dog, if he don't tie it better than you do. Well, if I had four hands, I could do some fancy tying, too. Fancy eating, too. Come on, drive on, Jethro. Melvin, you bourgeois banker, how can you just sit there when we may be about to meet royalty? I have tremendous self-control. <laughs> what did you find out? Who is she? Where is she from? Is she really a princess? Can I meet her? Did you speak to her? Drysdale, please. She has agreed to allow you to be presented to her. Oh, ma'am! 
company. However, her identity must remain a secret. I understand. International intrigue and all that sort of and thing. <laughs> she will speak to you only through her interpreter. Oh, I must call a special meeting of my bridge club and tell them of this. Presenting Mr. and Mrs. Drysdale. Je vous présente Monsieur et Madame Drysdale. Enchanté. <laughs> is the uh, princess, uh, that is her highness, uh, staying at Beverly Hills long? Madame interprétée. Votre altesse restera-t-elle à Beverly Hills longtemps? Enchanté. <laughs> oui? Yes. Ah! <laughs> Come, your highness. That is real quality, the product of generations of breeding and culture. She represents something that mere money cannot buy. I agree. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> She's staying in Beverly Hills for a while. Perhaps we can persuade the princess to appear at our huge party. What huge party? The one we're giving for the princess. Now, Margaret. <laughs> the way you're very clever at arranging these things. Do speak to her interpreter. Enchanté. <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me, ma'am, but uh, we're looking for my daughter. She's about your size, except she got yellow hair. Well, I'm Ellie. <laughs> <laughs> Doggy, that is Ellie May. Child, have you had your head up a stovepipe while your hair is as black as soot? I <laughs> know, Granny. This here's a wig. See? Like this. is here. Mrs. Drysdale would like to give a huge party for Ellie Mae. Mrs. Drysdale? She was mad at us this morning. Yeah, we was chasing Ellie and we cut across her outdoor card parlor and she got off of our latest. Come here throwing things at us. Little sandwiches. They was good, too. <laughs> her attitude has changed. Will you attend the party, Ellie? Well, is the rest of my family invited, too? Mrs. Drysdale would be thrilled at the prospect. <laughs> Excuse me. You see, Ellie, what becoming a lady has already done for you? Yes, sir, Paul. Did you speak to her? Will she accept? The princess will attend your party if her family and retinue are also guests. But of course they're all invited. I'll be honored. <laughs> I shall so inform her highness. Now, Milton, if we are going to entertain the royal family, I insist that those untouchables next door be moved out. <laughs> Margaret. How would you like it if the princess and her entire family and retinue were to occupy the Clampett Mansion? Oh, Milford, I'd be the happiest woman in the world. No more complaints about the hillbillies? Never. And your mother will stay in Boston? Forever. <laughs> then you have my word on it. Uh. Her Highness is pleased to accept your Highness. Oh, Miss Drysdale, now that you ain't mad at us no more, we can just cut out all this foolishness of bowing and French talk. We're right obliged for the party invite. Hope you have some more of them little sandwiches you was throwing at us. What's the matter, Miss Drysdale? You got a stomach ache? I reckon she's ailing, all right. <laughs> oh, gone all right. Sorry, Miss Drysdale called off that party. Been a good chance for Ellie Mae to meet some fellas. Don't you worry about Ellie Mae. She's going to get her husband the right way. Baking and cooking. Oh, you got to stir up biscuits again? No, nope. this time it's my homemade bread. How you doing, Ellie Mae? All right, I reckon. And you put in the yeast, girl? Oh, they was. All oh, there was, why, that was a two-quart crock. <laughs> <laughs> I reckon 
Right. You best get this outside before it gets out of control. <laughs> Open the door, Lemmy. <laughs> best throw the blanket over it, Granny. We don't want to be scraping it off the walls again. <laughs> Now I know what Cousin Pearl used to say to you, Ellie Mae, marry a man that knows how to make dough. <laughs> It's time to say goodbye to Jed and all his kin. They would like to thank you folks for kindly dropping in. You're all invited back next week to this locality to have a heaping helping of their hospitality. Hillbilly, that is. Set a spell. Take your shoes off. Y'all come back now, here. This has been a Filmways presentation.